wrap up to a you know very tumultuous and tough tough session. I think a lot of hard calls, but we have a balanced budget. Uh, we um, focus in on core government services, health, human services, education. Uh, it's a no frills budget, lean and mean uh, all, all the way through. Obviously. Uh, People will not be happy with some of the uh, decisions. But these trying times, we have to make some hard choices. And um, I'm glad that we reached this point. It was good working with my Senate counterpart, uh, Chair Ige. Uh, very uh, compassionate person, very thoughtful. Uh, also a tough negotiator, too. So um, I think it's a fair package. Uh, we tried to um, have people share in the, in the, in the Carrying the load to provide you know, the essential core services. So I, I feel I feel proud of this budget. What we have to do with limited uh, options, limited uh, means. So I think it's a it's a good end to a you know tough session. Um, the numbers look like it should work. Oh yeah, yeah we have we have a balanced budget. Uh, we have a uh, uh, pretty good cash carryover balance. Uh, two years um, so if the economy continues to recover uh, we should be okay so I, I feel comfortable with that uh, obviously like you say one thing that did go off the table was you know, was something was like, the pension and you know obviously you shelved that so what, what kind of change that around like that well, I, I think um, from the get go, I think people didn't understand that it was one of fairness. There are people out there who are retirees, um, receiving income from rental property or savings accounts, or maybe their IRAs or 401ks that are currently in tax. Um, it was a matter of fairness that why should some other folks not also contribute because their income is paid for by government sponsored. Uh, pension plans. And that was the whole idea. And we took the approach that at the higher income level of $200,000 or more for a couple, adjusted gross income, they could afford to uh, uh, contribute a little bit more. It wouldn't really effect, impact their quality of life. And that was a progressive kind of tax policy. But again, it's very emotional. Uh, change is always hard on people. So I think uh, we had uh, some good discussions here, and I think the discussion will be going forward in the larger community on how do you address the demographics and the needs of the uh, growing baby boomer population, the green population, and the demographics out there are, is our destiny. And we're going to have to uh, realize that we have an aging population, uh, the difference between uh, employed working uh, people and a retired, non-working people is shifting over. And at one point in time, we need to uh, face up these realities. But I feel very proud that the House took a position with the governor of trying to bring some of these very controversial issues, important issues, uh, to the public uh, debate. And also, um, obviously, everything goes up for four votes, but you guys are pretty much pretty certain that you should be <laughs> I don't think you can comment on that. Well, I, you know, I, 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 feel, I feel comfortable that I think most, most of the members understand the necessity to make some of these hard choices. Uh, no one likes to raise taxes. No one likes to raise fees. But at the same time, no one likes to cut uh, essential services to, to kids. No one likes to cut services to seniors. No one likes to cut out uh, meal programs uh, for the disabled. So I think most people understand these are hard choices, and you just got to do the best you can and report back to your constituents. Okay.